Praise be to the name of Jesus. Let's go before our Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. You're a good daddy. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We know, Lord Jesus, that you have given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And we believe, Father God, because you have given it to us, we are the better because we're receiving your life. You're sitting on the throne. You're not in lack. You're not in poverty. Sickness and disease can't even come around you. And you just live. We thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. You do not have a care in the world. Because you told us to cast your cares, our cares, upon you. And you know how to distinguish all of them. And we thank you, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. Father God, as we take this new adventure to your word, Holy Spirit, you are unlocking the hidden truths in your word so that we can walk in those things, Father God. We love you and we appreciate you. Now I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and mind. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. With all the group that press, say amen. amen. Turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. We're going to, we're, 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 we've been, we stutter. <laughs> mm-hmm. We've been um, talking about discipleship versus Christianity. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about discipleship versus Christianity. And we're going to go and read some different things today, you're just going to touch on it. And when you, when you read it, it's almost going to sound as if that God is chastising you. But if you listen, what, is, what he's doing is instilling grace into you. Grace has already been shared. It's already been shared and brought into your hearts. But I would urge you, if you do not spend quality time in the reading of God's Word, as well as the study of it, you're going to miss a lot. Because here we are, we in service, hour, hour and a half, two hours, tops. And then we, we teach on different areas. And then just maybe if you show up on Wednesday night and then you get 45 minutes worth of more teaching, you know, uh, I will say to you that you're on the right path, but you're going to miss it because I know a lot of people like me, I've been going on, I, I have, I had a lot of head knowledge. You can read the word of God and that's re- reading the word of God is really, really good. But at some point in time, you have to start experiencing that knowledge. Because think about it. If you're sitting in church right now, which you are, some of y'all, you watching me right now, you're at home, on your tablet, sitting there working, you're hearing me, hearing me say these things. And what I just said, I just ca- captured your attention. Satan sees it. God sees it, and Satan sees it. Please hear me. God sees you watching. He said, okay, yes, yeah, she's on the right path. The angels, they're like, yes, she's getting fed. Or he's getting fed the word of God. But guess what? Satan also sees it too. And he said, he hearing what's being taught. And all of a sudden, he said, uh-oh, if, if Ivory gets a hold of that, I won't have a footstool in his life anymore. So now he's going to make sure chicken and everything that you got to do run across your brain, (laughs) run across your brain 
to try to get you and distract you from completely listening to what's being said. Because when he does that, in that moment, that twinkling of an eye, in that instance of a moment, Satan stopped your understanding and, 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 and cut your thinking off from trying to receive what the Holy Spirit was trying to get to you. And you the only one can stop that. So now here he is, if he can get your thinking away from what's being said and get your mind on everything else, guess what's going to happen? You won't receive what God had for you. And then if you do get it, if you do get it, revelation, praise be to God. Remember in Mark chapter 4 when the Bible says that some were sown on stony ground and some people that did hear the word of God, they were glad. But because they had no root when they went out and started trying to walk in it, and they had no root in it, it perished away. It, 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 did not, it, it, it didn't bring forth any kind of fruit. What's going on at that time? You heard the word. You got revelation while you can't listen to me teach. Praise God. Yes, I understand it. But then you did not go home to cultivate that root, cultivate the seed that was sown. How do you cultivate it? Prayer. Confession of it, meditation on it, you're thinking about it. You're thinking about what you heard. 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 You're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. And all of a sudden, before you know it, it don't just become revelation to you where you got some information. You're starting to experience it and you begin to walk in it. And then Satan going to say, okay, I'm going to see if he or she really got it. They're going to send a challenge your way to see if you really got it, to see how you react to it, how you react to the challenge. How you going to react to the challenge based on what you got from the, from, from the revelation? Or are you going to react to, go back to what you used to react to? Bill shows up. You just heard, my God shall supply my needs according to your riches and glory. Now all of a sudden this bill show up. What are you saying? Oh Lord Jesus, I don't know how we gonna pay this bill. You you just reacted like the world. Bill shows up, my God shall supply my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I paid my tithes, I gave my offerings, and I'm trusting God that he'll meet all my needs. Ooh, what you just do? You just act, you just acted on what the word said. But the bills need to be paid. Bills don't be paid. My God has already supplied. He has already given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. What's going on? So, with that man said, we get to Mark, Matthew chapter 7. Let's drop all the way down. I want you all to look at verse... Oh, where is it at? Look what it says in verse 13. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in and through it. <laughs> because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Uh-oh. Few there be that find it. Straight is the gate. What is he referring to? When you first read this, what are you getting out of it? What do you think you're getting out of it? Look what it says. Enter into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That leadeth to what? And many there be which go in in three, to three. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. At first glance, when you just read these first two scriptures, it almost looks as if that God is saying, that Jesus is saying, there's few that be that find that way to life. Did y'all see that? But he's saying, in top verse, but broad is the way to destruction. So if there's only a few that leads and that goes to life, everybody else must be going to destruction. So we like, 
I told you there was a contradiction in, in the Bible, the Bible. I thought Jesus said he's the way, the life, and the truth. No man coming unto the Father by him. I thought Jesus said that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I thought Jesus said, for God wishes above all men that all men will believe on Jesus. I, I, I thought you said that. It does. Don't just look at those scriptures by themselves. Those two scriptures cannot stand alone. And I have heard men and women of God try to take these scriptures and they try to make it seem as if that God is trying to bust upside your head and no matter which path you go on you're going to end up in destruction so we have to go back and find out exactly what Jesus was even talking about don't, don't, don't just come in on the middle of those scriptures so go all the way back up to verse 1 from this moment forward, I'm going to be reading out of the Good News Version Bible, but I'm also going to be jumping back and forth to the King James Version Bible as well. Go back up to verse 1. Look what verse 1 says. Do not judge others so that God will not judge you. Stop. What are we talking about now? Judgment. There you go. We're talking about judgment. We're talking about judgment. God says, do not judge others. So and so that God will not judge you. For God will judge you in the same way as ye judge others, and he will apply to you the same rules you apply to others. Uh-oh, uh-oh. And then King James says it like this: For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with the measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Notice that. He said. And you just got it. If you judge somebody else, God is going to judge you. And if, this, I mean, the same rules or however it is that you are judging somebody else, God is going to judge you based on the same intentions, based on the same rules that you judge somebody else. So now, what is the whole thing what we're talking about right now so far? Judgment. We're still talking about judgment. Praise God. Look what verse 3 says. When men do you, I said, why then do you look at the speck in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the log in your own eye? The King James Version says beam. I like the word beam. <laughs> why, are you, why are you looking at the, the speck in somebody else's eye? No, this is like, here you are, here you are. Uh, if you, uh, it, it's almost like Jesus kind of categorizing sin or wrongdoing or flaws and faults. It's almost as let, like, uh, uh, boy, use me as an example. I ain't going to get mad at me. That's like I got a twin in me. <laughs> here, here me is, uh, I got a beam in my eye. I, I'm committing adultery against my wife. But my, my twin me, all he doing is uh, he, uh, he cussing people out. I'm committing adultery, and he cussing, he, he using profanity all the time. Brother, why, why, why you always got to use so much profanity? I won't cuss at all, but he's a cusser. <laughs> you, you, you see what I'm doing? You see what's going on? Here I am, my brother like, ain't you the one cheating on your wife? You see what's going on there? Look what he says. But look what Jesus does in verse 4. How dare you say to your brother, please let me take the speck out of your eye and you have a beam in your own. <laughs> you got a big log in your own eye. Look what he says in verse 5. What's the very first thing Jesus said in verse 5? You a hypocrite. You are a hypocrite. And how many hypocritical people are walking around? I've been down that road too. Been down that road too. Been down that road too. And yeah, if you sit up there and say that you've never been down that road, oh, yeah. we're going to cast that lying demon out of you right now. Because we've all been down that road. Everybody has. Everybody has. You try to judge somebody else based on what they've done. You need to stop smoking and stop drinking. Ivory, you need to stop lying on people. You need to quit cussing. Well, you need to quit looking at all them girls every time they walk by. You, you see what I'm saying? And, we're, we're, and people are constantly, constantly doing that. Look what Jesus says. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. 
we talked, we kind of like talked about this last week. We was last week, we fall last. When you do repent to the Lord, Father God, I got this big old log in my eye. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I've been committing adultery against my wife. Help me. Now, I've gone, let's just say, six, eight months, and I have not committed adultery against my spouse, which I've never committed. So I'm just, example, come on, people, teaching with examples. Y'all, some of y'all, man, I'm like, Pastor, keep talking about that adultery, because some of y'all out there doing it. And you all, when you're trying to talk about what somebody else shouldn't be doing, and you want to come up with all these different words, tell a lie, say the devil. I mean, tell the truth, say the devil. But you're doing all this other stuff. And the thing in my head, like, how can you even dare and tell me what I shouldn't be doing, and then you doing all that stuff? That ain't got nothing to do with the job. That ain't got nothing to do with this. And yeah, too, it's the same thing. Just because you at the job or you're at home, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really make a difference. What I do at home is my own personal business. See? That's what Jesus just said. Jesus says, what did he say about a, 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 a life? He said, can a light be hid up under a bushel? A light is supposed to be set on top of, uh, on side, on top of a, a, a mountain <laughs> so that everybody can see, so that it give light. We are the, that Jesus said, you are the salt of the world. You are the earth, you are the light. People need to be able to see your good works so it can glorify God, so it can draw them in. You trying to tell me that's going to be perfect? No, I'm not trying to say it to be perfect. Why do you think Jesus said, get the log out of your brother's eye? Mm -hmm. So if you get the log out of your eye and you didn't got some lift in there to where you hadn't been doing anything crazy, other people going to be around you. So you trying to tell me that now that you doing right, it makes everything right because you doing right now? No, I'm just trying to tell you that God helped me. He also can help you. That's what this thing is about. And one time, none of us could help ourselves at all. That's why God had us in Jesus. Look what he says. Look what he says. Verse 6. Do not give what is holy to dogs. They will turn and attack you. Do not throw your pearls in front of pigs. They will only trample them underfoot. Notice, notice how Jesus still tells me. He said, don't turn around and be hypocritical. And the, the fruits that you've gained, don't try to go make it seem like that those things that, that is based on what you have accomplished. Because you didn't. God helped you with this. That's when he gets out of verse 7. Ask. Uh oh, come on, man. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? He said, Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks will receive. And anyone who seeks will find, and the door will open. The door will be open to those who knock. Would any of, <clears throat> oh Lord Jesus, would any of you who are fathers give your give uh, your son a stone when he asks for for some bread, or would you give him a snake if he asks for some fish? <laughs> they said, bad as you are, mm -hmm. bad as you are, mm -hmm. know how. To give good gifts to your children, how much more then will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? What good things? You've been struggling with this thing over here. You've been struggling with judging. You've been a hypocrite. Notice what you've been doing. You're asking the Father to help you. Now that he's helped you, you turn to help somebody else out. Come on now, we're talking about we disciples of Jesus Christ. We're disciples. We're not just Christians. We're just I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. No, we're a disciple. Why? Because the disciples, some of us Christians, have been some of the most hypocritical people out there. Going right down the same path road as the Sadducees and Pharisees. We, we're gaining some prestige. We're gaining some honor. We're, we're living holy. And then we turn right around and make it seem as if that the person who still committed sin, that they beneath you. No. You, you God helped you. You didn't turn around and help somebody else out. Okay, here we go. Let's read on. Let's read on. Verse, verse 12. He said, do for, he said, do for others what you want them to do for you. This is the meaning of the law of Moses and the teachings and the prophets. 
my mother was using the law of the Old Testament to teach grace. You're right, he was. That there's a second, that there's another chance. There's another chance. There's another chance. You can keep, you can make this right. Why any it says it in the Old Testament that God's mercies is renewed daily. That's grace. Every single day you get another chance to do better. Look what he said. Look what he says. Look what he said. Uh oh, he said in verse 13, go in through the narrow gate. Because the gate to hell is wide, and the road that leads to it is easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, now we got a whole other revelation there. Mm -hmm. Jesus ain't trying to bust somebody upside the head. He ain't saying that your whole life is going to go through the destruction. He said, I'm showing you this path road. Lean on me, and I'll help you. That's the narrow, that's the narrow way. It's easy to go down the other way and still stay hypocritical and judge other people. So now we understand, oh, glory to God, praise God. It's real easy to continue down that road and do like everybody else been doing and try to justify the wrong that you do. God knows my heart. No, God needs to see your actions. And your actions will show your heart. I didn't ever do this in the Bible because that's why you got to sit and do if you read it and sit down and just walk the story out. I um, mean, we, we've been watching, I was telling my sister the other day, just as we watch, we watch have y'all seen the movie, Age of Ultron, the Avengers movie? I like the storyline. I mean, our mom was doing a really, really good job in that storyline. You know, that's my entertainment time. You know, I just, you know, I, you know, Captain America and Iron Man and the Hulk. You know, blowing everything up, and you know, but the storyline is the most intriguing part of it. And now you got the Iron Man series, and Thor, and Captain America, and now you got these new Avengers coming in, and then you got a, uh, you got a, uh, 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 the uh, Black Widow, you know, uh, uh, Natasha. <laughs> you, you, you got all, you got this, this constant, and the storyline keeps you going. Jesus is doing the same thing here. He said, "Hey, hypocritical." Judge another folk? He says, that's one storyline. Who do you think is behind that storyline? But, I mean, verse 4, but, verse 14, but, everybody say but. but. But, the gate to life is narrow, and the way that leads to it, it is hard. And there are few people who find it. He's not saying that your whole life is going to end up in destruction. He's not saying that, uh, that, that this way is easier because it is hard to see other people and then not judge them. It's hard. And it gets real challenging. It gets really, really challenging. And that's the hard aspect to it. But a disciple finds it and they say, I'm going to go down this path road. I'm going to go down this path road. I'm, I'm not going to go down the other way. That's why Jesus says, it's few people that do that. It's not saying that you're going to lose your salvation either. A lot I've heard people make the statement that you'll lose your salvation because you've been hypocritical and you judge. You know, you commit sin. Sin. No, I heard somebody say to just other, nah, 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 there's no way in the world that you can't sin every day. Well, I don't sin every day. I don't sin every day. I don't. And I don't want to say nothing real loud in front of everybody. I tell them, no, no, I, I don't know because I know people when they get into all the judging and stuff and they try to try to figure out what you're doing wrong. But how did, you didn't do this right the other day at the job. Ain't that sin? So you have no idea what what sin is. Just because I didn't, just because I didn't sweep the floor the correct way. Ain't that sin? You did it wrong. Ain't that's wrong? So it's sin. Okay, look what this is saying. Look what this is saying. He says, he says, um, verse 15. Be on your guard against false prophets. They come to you like looking like sheep on the outside, but on the inside they are really like wild wolves. So now we understand what these wild wolves are. These wild wolves are people who've been hypocritical and they judge your folk. They judge your people. With that being said, they've been hypocritical. They try to look at every flaw and every fault that you do and they judge you based on it. 
Look what else he says. You will know them by what they do. Oh Lord. Thorn bushes do not bear grapes, and briars do not bear figs. A healthy tree bears good fruit, but a poor tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a poor tree cannot bear good fruit. And any tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know the false prophets by what they do. So now we're talking about hypocrites, we're talking about judges. Look what he's saying. Oh Lord, here, here's the kicker, here's the kicker, here's the kicker. It still looks as if that God is going to cut you off. It still looks as if God will cut you off. Look what it says in uh, chapter 7, the King James. He says, uh, where is it at? Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is what? Hewn down and cast to the fire. So it, all, it looks as if that here you are, you will believe in Jesus Christ. You will believe in Jesus Christ. You've been hypocritical. You've been judging. God gonna cut you off and cast you over to the lake of fire. That is not what. No, that's what I. When I first read it, I said the same thing. But I want you to go back up. I want you to look at uh, verse 18. Uh, oh, look, verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth what? Yeah. Evil. Now that's the kicker right there. That's the kicker right there. God knows if he changes the corrupt tree into a good tree, the corrupt tree will become a good tree, and the good tree will bear the fruit. So how does God change the corrupt tree? How does he change the corrupt tree? Go back up in verse 6. I mean, oh, no, no, oh, oh, Lord. Verse 5. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. He just, Jesus just gave us the example. He said, change it. How do you change? Through repentance. Father God, I've been hypocritical the whole time. Oh, Lord, I've been judging people. Forgive me. I don't want to be cut off. I, I, don't, want, I, I don't want to be hewn down. If you go, if you read it again, all the way down in verse, oh Lord, verse 18, verse 18, he says, the good tree, oh, I mean, oh Lord, verse 19, every tree that bear, bringeth forth not fruit, every, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and kept to the fire. The verse 20, wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. If you go look these up, and if you go look this up in the Greek, the Greek word here is arrow, which means God will bear up. God will bear up. That's where the patience of God comes in. He will be patient with you until that corrupt tree becomes good. You're not going to lose your salvation. Some of the stuff you do may end up getting you to getting you to heaven quicker. <laughs> but when you get there, you can't just you'll get there, you'll be like, oh Lord Jesus, I'm here. And you'll look at somebody else and you'll be like, I judged you. Now I know I judged you so bad. I can't, how did I judge you so bad? Then you're gonna look over and you're gonna see Jesus, and you're gonna see all the other prophets and all the other people who've gone to heaven. And you're going to be like, oh man, I made a huge mistake. And you're going to look around and you're going to be like, I'm here too. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise God, I made it heaven as well. <laughs> What's going on? Look what he said. Look what he said. God is trying to get you to change these things now before you get there. Watch this. He says, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom 
of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So how, not everyone is said to be Lord, Lord. So a lot of people, they call Jesus Christ Lord. Jesus is not really their Lord. They just said it. They'll say it like this. Well, I believe in God. I believe in God. I believe in God. Then you ask them, how do you know? You guys say, well, I just know. How do you know? I just know. Give me a scripture reference that show that you do know. Well, I, I can't give you none. I just know it in my heart. You know, there is, the Bible even says that the heavens declare God's glory. There is a deep knowing on the inside of you to where it's, it's hard to reject God for most, for most people. And some people, they do it out of arrogance. What is all these uh, the, uh, atheistic people that, that, that choose to say the atheists. There's some, something happened in their life to where it caused their heart to be seared and to say that there is no God. Y'all see that? But look, look what he said. He says, verse 22, Many will say to me in, the, in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? I, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy. In the name of Jesus, I cast the devil. In the name of Jesus. So what, 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 what's going on here? What's going on here? We didn't went from judging people, and now we've gone all the way to the part to where we're standing before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Y'all see that? Because they come in that day. In that day. Look what he says. We are prophesied in thy name, and in thy name we are cast the devil. In thy name done many wonderful works, and I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, I mean ye that work iniquity. Depart from me. Hold on. Depart from me. I can remember in my own life what God did that to me. So it ain't just about when we get off into the kingdom. And you know, God start casting people away. Because if you get cast away at that time, you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord. But God will chastise you now. How do I know that? Been there and done that. On, I remember laying on a dog couch. And I remember I wanted God to heal me. But my life was so raggedy. And God says, no. Because you won't do what I told you to do. And I heard disappointment in my father. And in a sense, he was saying, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. And then when I, when I realized that, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. My life has been so raggedy, and God has been having me on the path, Lord, ever since. Let's finish this up. Let's finish this up. Look what he says. Look what he says. He says, verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will like him like him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded or upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the, the rain descended, and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. He's talking about your own life. Now we've gotten to the destruction. God was trying to get you to the point to where you weren't being hypocritical. God was showing you how not to judge people. And he said, if you keep going down that path road, you're going to end up in destruction. It's, it's going to happen. That's why you see people nowadays bitter, get bitterness all in their heart. You see people nowadays, they, they feel as if that, that God has abandoned them. They feel as if that God has left them alone. They feel as if that God is, trying, God is bringing the curse on them. And God, it's not God. You brought it. Because you kept going down that path road of being a hypocrite. You kept going down that path on and judging somebody else. See somebody else. You a homosexual? Ugh. Really? Wasn't that you just 10 years ago? Uh, cussing folk out? You a lesbian? I can't believe that. Man, you need give a hug. Come on, babe. 
baby. I, God loves you, so do I. Hug. God loves you. You commit, I remember uh, Miss Faith. Miss Faith, I remember. You know, I remember when she told us a story about a person who uh, committed murder. And her for one, she ain't, she ain't, she ain't never been around nobody who ever done that. And they had just got out of jail. And you know, the conversation geared to the point to where she really, they had uh, committed murder. And he, she, he said, what'd you go to jail for? And she he said, murder. And it, it, it caught, caught off guard. And she would, but she know these scriptures. And she said, Lucky, God forgave you. You did, you did your time. I forgive you too. Glory to God, man. Last verse. Look what he said. Look what he said. Look what he said. Look what he said. Uh, he says, uh, yeah, they, they don't know. <laughs> and it came, verse 28, verse last two verse. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. I like, I like what it says over here. I like what it says over here in the Good News Version. Verse 28. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowd was amazed at the, at the way he taught. He wasn't like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. Jesus wasn't trying to bust nobody upside the head. He was saying, hey, I'm showing you this grace. I'm showing you a way to repent. I'm showing you that you can't overcome. And you can get to the point to where you can help somebody else out. And the teachers of the law is, see, you did wrong, so you trying to justify what you did was wrong, because now you ain't doing it no more, so you gonna try to judge me? Only God can judge me. See, have y'all ever heard people like that? I mean, I've been there. You shouldn't be saying, say you, you ain't perfect. Didn't you just do this just the other day? You lied. Not knowingly, no, I didn't lie. Not knowingly, no. And if I did lie, I came to you and told you I'm lying. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm a disciple, okay? And, and, and you really, you really, and here's the whole cool thing about really, really becoming a disciple. You get to that point and you say, if I did do anything wrong, I'm sorry. Forgive me. So when you sincere, and they see you sincere about it, what, what can people say? What, what can they really say? Hey, hey, God loves us. But what did Jesus say up there in the, in the verse? In the verse. What did he say? In the verse. Verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them by their actions. You'll see them by what they're producing. You'll see it. You'll know it. That's a disciple. Jesus even said it over in the book of John as well. He says, by the way you love people is the way people will know that if you're a disciple or not. Not based on because you do all the little goody two-shoe things, but the way you treat people like you're not judging and by you not being hypocritical. We disciples. We disciples of Christ. Hey, remember, continue to learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next time.